Hello and welcome to a new episode of Disrupt X Impact Series, focused on the future of agritech. In this episode, we will discuss how agritech has become a priority in the wider MENA region. For example, the Moroccan government has launched what's called the Green Generation 2030 Plan to catalyze digitalization in the agricultural landscape. A good example is a Moroccan startup, AgriEdge, that is deploying technologies for precision irrigation, which involves the deployment of satellite images and sensors to manage the use of water, therein reducing the amount of water used in a given area by 25%. While Egyptian startup Wastelizer breaks down animal waste to produce water, biogas, and plant fertilizers to enhance the quality of crops, promote the development of a circular economy, and because animal waste is reused rather than dumped in rivers, it also improves the water quality. On that note, today we have with us a leading name from the Egyptian agritech landscape. Allow me to welcome Farah Imara, co-founder of Fresh Source, an Egypt-based B2B agri supply chain platform that's changing the way fresh food is sourced, moved, and sold. Para, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Although we couldn't have you at the studio yesterday, but uh, nonetheless, it's a wonderful. Uh, it's wonderful to have you on the show today with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. And um, you know, I would like to start with uh, the kind of developments uh, that you've seen in the. MENA agritech landscape over the past three to five years. Uh, let's take that as a starting point of this discussion today. Sure. Um, so when we actually came to start Fresh Source, uh, Omar and I, uh, my co-founder, um, in 2018, it was a very new um, area to be uh, focusing on. There weren't... Um, any um, startups that were doing the B2B marketplace in the agriculture space. And um, however, in the uh, other uh, countries in Africa and Asia, there were a lot of um, companies that were trying to address these uh, problems. So what I found in Egypt was that there were, um, it just wasn't getting that much attention for uh, tech entrepreneurs. Uh, that can be for a, a range of, of reasons, one of them being that it is a very difficult and risky industry. So what I've seen over these past uh, three to five years are a lot more startups that are um, attempting to solve really big problems in our food security, and a lot of investors that are also getting the courage and confidence to invest in agri uh, startups as well. So I think it has been a positive change overall. Anything uh, particular that stands out uh, in terms of developments, Farah? Something that uh, inspires you greatly? Uh, for sure. Well, there's um, there are a lot of uh, advancements that are happening in the. Uh, technical uh, agri tech space, and that includes precision agriculture, um, includes a lot of uh, developments with blockchain, with AI, and these are um, just advancements that will really affect our planet as a whole in terms of sustainability, in terms of um, how much food uh, there is. So really um, being able to bring that innovation into Egypt and into the MENA region as a whole is something that does really uh, inspire me. And now over to your inspiring story of setting up uh, Fresh Source. If you could go back um, to the beginning of your journey and tell us a little bit about what really inspired you to set up Fresh Source. And uh, as you were mentioning just a few moments ago, solve a problem in an industry that actually accounts for over 11% of Egypt's 
GDP. Not only that, um, as consumers are sort of, you know, um, at, a, at a very strange uh, crossroads when uh, food prices have gone up, prices of essential goods have gone up. How, um, you know, how are platforms like Fresh Source trying to sort of solve problems for the consumer as well? Sure. So I'll tell you about uh, uh, what, what we do exactly. So uh, Fresh Source, we are the first um, B2B agri-supply chain platform in the MENA region, leveraging data and technology to transform the lives of producers, consumers, and businesses. So what we do is basically use our tech and our data that, have, that we've been gathering over the past four years to make educated decisions on what crops we should be working in, uh, which um, uh, farmers and or producers we should be focusing on and um, manage the entire cold chain uh, through from, from the farm, from the source, all the way to uh, delivery to the business. So we work with hotels, restaurants, uh, manufacturers, uh, across um, Egypt. Uh, how that started is uh, quite an interesting story. So I uh, studied in the UK. I did my master's in uh, the UK as well, and so did my brother, uh, Omar. And uh, he was actually working in Goldman Sachs in London at the time. I was. Uh, I had come back to Egypt. I worked in Endeavor. Um, if, if you've heard of it, it's a really a strong uh, nonprofit in entrepreneurship. So um, and I was lucky to start with Endeavor in 2012. So it was um, a very early view um, into the entrepreneurship ecosystem in Egypt. At the time, there wasn't even a proper word for entrepreneurship in Arabic. And so we actually had to brainstorm uh, what is the best way to translate it. Um, uh, so, so that gave me like a front row seat into startups, scale up, etc. And, and it, it really made me realize that this is something that I, I want to continue doing. I then started, uh, I then joined uh, PNG um, as their head of strategic communications for the Near East region. And um, that's when uh, everything changed. So we, uh, Omar and I, uh, our family business is in cold chain uh, agriculture, agriculture logistics. So what that means is um, cold chain facilities in terms of uh, refrigerated warehouses, uh, refrigerated trucks, and our like ripening chambers um, that are basically make the banana go from green to yellow, ready to eat. And um, so we were always really interested in, in, uh, in the industry. And then in 2018, we came across this article, the study um, by the UN, uh, by the FAO. Um, and it was uh, basically uh, uh, saying that approximately 45% of all food uh, grown in Egypt are, is lost before even reaching the store shelves. And that was just shocking for me. So um, as, as a country that's already under a lot of uh, water uh, stress, uh, food stress as well, I was really shocked that we're literally losing half, nearly half of what we could be uh, uh, producing. So for a, a, a consumer, when they walk into the store, they see half of what they could be seeing um and what, what that means is an increase in prices a waste of resources and obviously it's an endless list of problems and this is what inspired us so we thought um omar has a really strong tech background i come from a management background um and from our family business as well from the agri space we felt like okay if someone's going to address this uh, issue, it, it it should be us or else it wouldn't be fair for, for our country or the region, honestly, uh, if we just let it go to waste. Absolutely. And that is indeed very, very inspiring. Uh, and from the time you started Fresh Source, how have you uh, sort of tackled this problem? Because this is a very huge problem, you know, and uh, the process of getting food from farm to table is a very complicated one. So uh, as you were mentioning, with your respective strengths and knowledge from the family business, how are you sort of combining um, new technology pieces, data plus the human knowledge to sort of ease out this process of getting food from farm to table? Sure, so um, I'll, I'll also give you some, some uh, uh, perspective on why it's such a difficult industry. So 
when there are uh, uh, other B2B uh, marketplaces in the region that focus on dry. So let's say a can of soda, a bottle of water. And when you're bringing that from from point from the source to to the to the consumer or to the retailer, um, they really it's 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 a it's it's a, it, like it there the specifications are outlined so you know how to judge if this is a good water bottle or not is the seal on right is intact etc. Me and you will have the same view on the water mm-hmm. bottle if it's good or not. Yeah. Um, there's also a set price for it. So when it comes to fruits and vegetables. It's a very subjective way of, of, of judging if this is a good apple or if this is a bad apple. Um, what you might think is a is a, is a, a grade uh, two apple, I might consider a grade one apple. It depends on uh, our own, you know, preferences. And um, not only that, but there's no set price, so there it, it, it's not um, you know a standard price across everywhere that this apple is going to cost the same. Actually, we've seen changes that can go up to 40 and 50% between different sources. Um, and the third thing is that it's a perishable product. So every minute goes by, this product, once it's harvested, is losing value. Yes. So you have to strike a balance between um, this is a, a, the fair a price for this product and what you're going to have, you know, as the next best thing of, of not losing as much money as possible. So that's what makes it such a difficult industry. Um, what we've been able to do, or, or at least what we're really focusing on doing, is to make sure that we have as much data as possible on all the uh, uh, Egyptian crops. So we mapped out there are around 70 uh, main Egyptian crops. Uh, we had literally hourly prices uh, for the past four years for each of these items. So you take into um, consideration and then you make patterns, uh, whether um, any uh, global trends, uh, any governmental regulatory issues, and you try to map out what these price changes can be a result Mm -hmm. of. Um, That is, uh, in my opinion, the the, the most important uh, thing because then you can find out, okay, so, an, an average for this next month, this is how much I'm going to be able to sell for. So this is how much I can possibly buy for. And then you're able to map out these these trends that, that can result in, in a much stronger uh, business. So that is um, one of the main things that we focused on. And then the second thing is really the uh, know-how of the cold chain. So um, mm-hmm. basically the reason of these really high uh, uh, food losses are uh, for packaging for uh, transportation or for storage um, or harvesting methods. Once you're able to um, really uh, uh, fix the, the harvesting issues, which is um, which pesticides uh, you're going to use, when you're going to use them, what is the ideal harvest uh, schedule, then everything else is basically dependent on what you're packaging it in and what, what, what the climate is. So this is the, the, the benefit of our from our family a business which has it was launched in, in in the 80s they run one of the largest facilities in Egypt for cold chain um, storage and that was really capturing that team and their knowledge is what helped us that it, it just gave us that unfair advantage of, of, of knowing when and, and how we should be storing um, each of these uh, items absolutely yeah. you know and that knowledge is invaluable when you combine it with all the other components and you know put everything together that's an incredible package actually thank you thank you i appreciate that but uh, it's undeniable that there are tremendous growth opportunities in the region for agritech startups and uh, companies um, but there are also challenges uh, what according to you are uh, some of these uh, biggest challenges that uh, agri-tech startups will have to navigate? Sure. So um, one of the main things is, 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 is uh, uh, what I said, these, these issues um, that uh, it's, it's a perishable items, that, uh, item, that it's not a set price. So in terms of um, gaining investor confidence or trying uh, to raise uh, uh, investments, um, the stability of your margins, your, 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 your gross profit margin is something that investors uh, really prefer. But with the seasonality of uh, uh, produce, just um, 
for for example, in in the winter, the the main uh, crop for Egypt is uh, orange, oranges. Um, in the summer, there it's mangoes. Uh, obviously, I think you can can know that the profit margin and the price of oranges cannot be compared to mangoes. Yes. However, you're still exactly it. It the change is is crazy. However, in terms of uh, the costs of the um, the team that's going to be grading and packaging it, um, the trucks that are going to be transporting it, it's the same cost. So you end up with with kind of a, a volatile. Um, uh, margins so that is something that we faced in in the beginning um as, as an issue with investors and we communicated to them this is you know the nature of the business etc um however obviously it's 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 scary it's 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 scary when when an investor wants to um invest with you so how we overcame that was that now we show our annual trends so we have uh four years of, of data we're able to you know um uh, uh, back up what we're saying that uh, yes, these are, are uh, uh, they, they they change, but you can clearly see um, what each season will will be bringing. Wow, that's that's amazing. Um, and and finally, any th last thoughts for our uh, viewers? Um, honestly, I, I'm. Uh, it, it's my pleasure uh, to be here, Frank. I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, what I'd say for uh, your viewers, especially the female viewers out there, is uh, to really not let anyone box them in certain industries, uh, not anyone um, fear from uh, going into a male-dominated industry, such as agriculture, uh, such as medicine, a lot, a lot of industries that, that can be kind of intimidating. Um, I faced a lot of scrutin scrutiny and a lot of um, doubt when I was starting and I wish someone had told me this that uh, when someone uh, does that it's usually their own problem and, and doesn't reflect your problems so you really should uh, just follow your passion see what kind of problems that are existing around you and how you can fix them and then and, and that's basically what entrepreneurship is absolutely couldn't agree with you more and thank you so much once again uh, for joining us, Farah. It's been a pleasure to have thank you. Thank you very show. much. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. And thus, it's a wrap of yet another insightful episode of Disrupt X that wouldn't have been possible without the support of the team led by Upasana Barua. To our beautiful audience, thank you always for watching the show. Do, Do follow, follow us, us on, on social, social media. media. Send, Send us your, your thoughts, thoughts, questions, and, and feedback. feedback. If, if you have, have a disruptive, disruptive story, please, please do share, share that, that with us and, and get, get featured, featured in our Did, Did You Know segment. segment. Watch, Watch out and stay, and stay tuned, tuned for our future episodes under the Impact, Impact series of Disrupt, Disrupt X. X.